Hello everyone and welcome to this week's uh, commentated video. This will be bot number 25 from the top 50 brevities, the, a series of articles that was published by the periodical GE. Uh, today's match, we have uh, Master Yan Wenqing from Hebei province, uh, one of the top uh, Xiangqi masters, uh, especially in the opening phase. Now, a lot of his work, I've used a lot of his work uh, over the years and they have been very very instructive and informative. Black, there is no introduction. Grandmaster Hu Ronghua, uh, in my opinion, who will be the, the greatest of all time. Uh, a short link has been linked to my website whereby a short bio has been given, uh, has been written about him. So the match, uh, more details about the match, the event was the Peng Lai Bei, uh, Peng Lai Ge Cup, uh, Chinese National Men's Elite Invitation. Uh, it was held in 1992, and Grandmaster uh, Hu Ronghua was already a little bit old, and but yet Master Yang Wenqing was starting out on his illustrious career. Uh, this is a very nice bot, and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, uh, Master Yang Wenqing started with a central cannon, and Black countered with a possible sandwich horse defense, which he did. By the fourth move. Now, in this move, in this match, uh, Grandmaster Yan Wenqing chose to develop his chariot as a right chariot, which is not so commonly seen nowadays. Now, the main idea uh, for this move was to counteract the effects of this cannon to prevent it from applying a cannon skewer and allow Red to develop both his horses as proper horses. So, uh, by developing the Chariot, uh, Black would know more or less that Red would continue to play R1 equals to 4 and to prevent the cannon skewer. Now, after playing the cannon skewer, as Red would have developed both horses as proper horses, a usual line of attack would be along the central foul. So, sandwich horse defense, uh, Grandmaster Hurunghua has made this. Uh, counter very viable and has written a treatise which I've done many 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 videos and please check it out on my site. So developing uh, both horses tempting Master Hurunghua to apply a skewer which he did not. And Red finally showed what uh, formation he would choose for this opening. By moving the cannon over to the edge file, Red would now prepare to develop his left chariot as a file chariot. And also, uh, uh, this moving the cannon here would, would allow it to be protected by the elephant and the chariot so that the cannon skewer will now be uh, discouraged. So in the match, Grandmaster Hurunghua started his attack. Now one of the downsides of moving the cannon to the edge file would mean that uh, Red would become slightly behind in the development of his chariots. So Grandmaster Hurunghua targeted this weakness and decided to play C2 plus 4. Now uh, there are several variations that are given in the board which I will not go over. Uh, please refer them to yourself. Please refer to the variations by yourselves on the website. Uh, the link has been given below in the comment section. Uh, if I were to go through all of them, the video would last forever. So after playing C2 plus 4, Red will counter with the Riverbank Horse, threatening to push P7 plus 1 to attack the cannon. And this would of course uh, cause the Black Cannon to capture the pawn and target the elephant. By now, Black would have concentrated quite a bit of a material targeting the uh, right flank, but uh, this would be done at the expense of uh, th losing the central pawn, which uh, Red played. Now, e3 plus 1 would not be a good idea at this point because Black would develop his chariot and this would be a discovered attack, threatening to capture the threatening to capture the great cannon. And although uh, Red would gain a 
headhunter cannon. Uh, his cannon rank was now in trouble and his chariot was still undeveloped. So that is why e3 plus 1 was not a good idea to try to prevent the pawn from crossing the river. Now, um, because the central pawn was played, Grandmaster Hurunghua uh, pushed one of his elephants to the central file to link them and offer some to consolidate, con to consolidate his central file. Now, finally, did red play e3 plus 1? Uh, this position was also reached in several other matches, and as can be seen, there are two variations. Uh, the variations are quite long, but uh, in general, uh, Ray would gain victory. So, um, e a6 plus 5 was not a good idea. So, e3 plus 5, uh, e3 plus 5 was played uh, by the Grandmaster. Trade, but this was quite a good move in retrospect because Black would choose to develop his chariot, and by moving a one plus two, the cannon will be protecting the chariot. So at this point in time, uh, Red continued with a one a p five plus one. So far, so good. Now, it would not be a good idea to try to rush things and play. Uh, one equals to four because black could simply play uh, one equals to two to trade chariots. Now, although uh, one equals to four would threaten to capture the cannon, red would be forced to cap to trade chariots. And after trading chariots, the issue of the poor positioning of the black cannon would be resolved, and this would be a discovered attack on the great cannon. So. Black would, uh, sorry, Red would have to move his cannon away or use one move to push the uh, chariot over <coughs> to the uh, cross river bank rank. But uh, at this point in time, uh, Black would have a better position and more options available. So that is why R1 equals to 4 should not be played. Instead, Red played P5 plus 1, uh, hoping to develop his horse probably from the central file. Now, this uh, was not what uh, bl uh, Black would want to see, so he played uh, 8 plus 6 to consolidate the pawn rank. Now, this was a very, very uh, brilliant move because uh, it was, as we will see slightly later on, Black continued to push his pawn across the river. And Black started to add more pressure on this flank. Now, Red decided to gain some material with this move, um, threatening to play to move the cannon away to attack the Black Chariot. Now, Black read the situation very well and con countered very accurately with this move. Now, by by making this move. Uh, if need be, black can play r1 equals to 2 and I'll protect the, protect the uh, black cannon and also be prepared to play p7 plus 1. Now there is a, a multitude of other things that black can do as we are near, slowly nearing the climax of this game. Now, uh, red decided to protect his, um, protect his cannon rank. And Black continued to attack with R1 equals to 4, forcing a prophylactic uh, move of A4 plus 5. But this was all in Black's plan, and Black continued to play a R4 equals to 2. Now this would be the beginning of a brilliant trap set by Black. So, uh, Black Red decided to retreat his chariot. Now this was quite a big blunder, but um, this was quite a big blunder because uh, Red failed to appreciate the gravity of the situation. So with Awani, with the chariot moving here, Red was prepared for to, to go for discovered check with RC2 equals to 5 and probably capture the chariot. But instead, Red chose to dip, uh, chose to uh, retreat his chariot instead. 
Now, this was a very interesting trip. Now, if Black tried to play uh, c2 equals to 5 to gain material, but will simply play c8 equals to 5 to prevent the check or to resolve the check. But that was why Black start suddenly chose to trade chariots with c2 equals to 9. Now, this was a very beautiful move. Uh, Black chose to Black was forced to trade chariots, and as can be seen, this red flank was now under heavy attack, while red still had not mustered any uh, viable threat at this point in time. Black uh, red still did not appreciate the gravity of the situation, and Black continued to attack. Red counter aggressively. Red sacrificed the horse just to attack. But at this point in time, the Grandmaster played a brilliant move with a c4 plus 7 check. Now, what would happen if red played a5 equals to 4? And uh, red could only play e1 minus 3. He could not capture the black cannon or it will be an immediate threat to check bait with p7 plus 1. So uh, these moves were not found in the uh, board. I generated them from my computer software and you can see how black will go for the kill. Checkmate. So uh, red was hit badly by this shot out of the blue and had to play uh, had to play e1 minus 3 and after that the master the grandmaster did played c6 minus 6 for discovered check and that was the end of the game so red resigned at this point and only 22 plies uh, however, I ran this position through the computer, and uh, perhaps an even better move would have been c6 minus 4. Uh, now, if c6 minus 6 were played, black would still have F an advantage of about uh, 800 points, 850 points. But if c6 minus 4 were played, black, the black cannon would now threaten to attack the central file for the heaven and earth cannons. And... Uh, Black would have a advantage of about 1,500 points, so this might have been a better move. But uh, either way, uh, perhaps the young master was simply too distraught, uh, and he felt that he could not do anything about this about the attack by Black on his right flank, so he resigned. But uh, as can be seen. Um, in conclusion, this match, Black pushed his cannon across the river and used it brilliantly to limit the development of the red chariot. And uh, from there on, it's about, uh, sorry. And Black played a very nice move, trying to develop, uh, limit the development of the left chariot. And this would eventually set up black for the attack on the right flank and allow black to play this very brilliant move. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this game and uh, if you like the work that I've been doing, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.